mama does milk. Mama does nine months of indigestion and awkwardness, massive breast enlargement. Mama does milk. Mama does the housework, laundry, despite enlarging horizontally and de develops mid trimester's bloom of pregnancy with big boobs. Mama does milk. Mama gives up her job, loses her place in the hierarchy of business CEO CEOs while maintaining family needs. Yes, Mama does milk. Mama does hard labor for 12 hours, plus crowning for 30 prolonged minutes, the tear into her rectum, and sutures. Ouch! Mama does milk. Mama does sitch baths and heat lamp twice a day, with slow healing, constipation, cracked nipples, sore bottom below, sore nipples above. We, Mama does milk. Mama does the bruise on day five. While baby sucks, Mama drinks ounces of melancholy with sore stitches and a colicky baby. Sadly, Mama does milk. Mama's awake all night, hubby sleeps, but gets the twins to school on time. The kitchen is a mess and laundry piles up with her and with her hair untidy. Mama does milk. Mama does sex at six weeks. Yucky, mommy. Many pills or an IUD. Does mommy have a choice? And mama does milk. Mama dresses for a party and leaks all over her nursing brand and silk shawl. Breast pumps fill overflowing bottles. Yet mama does milk. It's a year now of motherhood and infancy. Things are back to normal. The tip twins are in grade two. Supermom gives in again to her baby Viking. Yes, Mama does milk. So that's Mama does milk, and I'm going to read a short uh, story. I I don't think it's more than two or three minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. What's beeping? No, something's beeping. It's like a doorbell. It's in the kitchen. It's in the back. I thought that was the end of the round. <laughs> anyway, I'll start over the ringing bell on the cow to tell me. This is called Obadiah and Bernice, and I lived in Alabama for 10 years uh, when I worked for Health Development Corporation. I was recruited by the U.S. Army. I looked after the cadets at the military school there. It was a sad day for me when I read in the Golden Mail the death of Coretta Scott King. As a doctor, I treated her aging parents for 10 years and had come to know her well. Obadiah and Bernice came from Hyderabad, Alabama. Uh, Hyderabad was a ham close to Marion, Alabama, where clinic in my new, and, and the Perry Clinic. They were spoke, well spoken as leaders of the black community. They endorsed me as their doctor and, and spread the word that I was an okay dog. Their daughter, Coretta Scott King, was educated in a private missionary school uh, in downtown Marion, the Lincoln School. They gave me Coretta's phone number in Atlanta, and I had to call them when, when the Scots were in trouble. And I phoned Atlanta quite regularly. Mrs. Coretta Scott King was always had time to talk to me about her folks and life in Marion, although she was busy lobbying to have the third Monday of January set aside as Martin Luther King Day. And it was last Monday that Martin Luther King Day was. Coretta Scott King was labeled by the press as coal and calcium. I never found that to be true. 
she, her voice was always soft and low, and she was always focused and concerned. When her mother uh, developed a malignancy, she arranged for, uh, for me to transfer her to Emory uh, University Hospital in Atlanta. Although Bernice and Obi were my regulars, they only came when they had a medical problem. They were a special pair. Obi was a small, seemingly tough old man who ran a small grove in Highburg. He stored a 44 under the counter, and he said he practiced shooting targets at dawn every morning. Nobody messed with Obi. And, and in the office, he, he always barged in ahead of Bernice until one day uh, Bernice said, ah, I'm going first. And, and after that, she did go first despite all these scowls. Bernice at 85 was still a tall, beautiful woman, eloquent in her speech, and just as feisty as Obi. We became good friends. The Scots applauded me for having the first non-segregated non medical clinic in Marion. Everyone, black, white, was free to use our flush toilets, to drink ice water from our water fountains. And we did have air conditioning, so we had a win-win uh, situation. During the summer heat, feet, all 50 waiting room chairs were in use. The local African-American leader, Obi, always knew when I made house calls into the black section of Marion. They were very proud of their middle daughter, Coretta, and their son-in-law. When I think of Scots, <clears throat> I often think of Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream. He gave that in 1963 uh, at the Lincoln Memorial Center in Washington. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident and that all men are created equal. And uh, there was a CBC uh, Monday night on the, on the shooting of Martin Luther King. When I decided to retire from medicine and return to British Columbia, Obi brought me a watermelon score and Bernice bought me a pound cake. Bernice hugged my neck and Obi, age 92, shook my hand and told me that I was one of the first whiteys he ever trusted. Thank you. Thank you.